Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to Fate's Wide Wheel. I'm your host, Sam Fain, and I am thrilled on this episode to be talking about The Outsider. That is the 11th episode of Season 2 of The Quantum Leap Revival, directed by Deborah Pratt and written by Ramey Park and Margarita Matthews. Um, Spoilers, I loved it. I thought it was superb. It's one of my favorite episodes of the season, of the whole series, frankly. Um, I think that the work done by everyone involved is just fantastic. Uh, the script is wonderful. Um, it's a great story. The The leap has a very old school feel to it. The HQ scenes are impactful and important and move the ball forward in some really interesting ways. Um, our main cast is brilliant and the guest cast is, you know, equal to them in every way. Um, it's just really a wonderful episode and a very special episode in, in, in my estimation because of all of those reasons. Um, I think it stands out a great deal. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to get in deeper to it as we go on, but I just wanted to throw that out there right off the bat. So if you're curious as to what I think about the episode, there you have it. I thought The Outsider was just superb. Um, let's see here. What else is going on? Oh, yeah, we've got a season finale airing in a week, um, along with uh, episode 212. Of course, the the season finale 213 will also be airing that night. Um, ah. There's so much excitement. By this time, you'll have seen the preview for episode 212, written by Benjamin Rabin, Derek Hughes, directed by Pamela Romanowski. Um, you know, you'll be aware that that Hannah is in the episode, that uh, that Jeffrey is in the episode, um, that Ben is a firefighter. Um, I don't know anything more than that because I haven't seen said preview um, and I have not seen the screener for the episode yet. Uh, so that's all I know. That's all I can tease. That's all I can say. Um, I, I know that big things are coming. It is going to be an incredible ride. Um, you know, just, yeah, be ready. Uh, it's going to be a popcorn and tissues kind of night. So, um, have both on hand. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. It's bittersweet because it means, you know, no new episodes for a while. Um, I, you know, obviously the, the question of renewal certainly, you know, hangs out there. I won't pretend to have an answer or know an answer. I am cautiously optimistic. Um, I just have a, a good feeling for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I do. Um, and I just think that the, the season that they've delivered for season two has been such an incredible leap forward. I'm so sorry. Uh, in, 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 in quality, in storytelling, everything across the board. And I've said that before. That is certainly not uh, me, you know, being harsh or critical of season one, because I thought that there were some incredible moments in season one. Uh, I still talk about you know, episode three of season one, somebody up there like Ben, for instance, a lot. Um, and that was the third episode of the series. So the fact that they were able to kind of hit such a high note so early on and continue to have them throughout the course of the season, um, I think is, is, is wonderful and indicative just of the, the quality and the strength of the team working on the show. So um, I'm a fan. I love the show. Everyone knows that. I know that there are some people out there that seem to enjoy not liking the show. And that's fine too. Um, I, I I think that if if you don't if the show's not for you, totally understand. Not a problem. After last week, um, it was very difficult to hear some of the comments and some of the things that people were choosing to say um about the episode um you know and 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 i can't believe i'm about to say this but as a queer content creator uh it it is difficult sometimes to not want to engage um if any of you are wondering why i haven't uh it's because i just don't want to go down that road and i don't see what could be accomplished by doing it this is not a case of like you know oh let's sit down and, and meet them halfway or let's have a conversation and maybe change the minds or something unfortunately that's just not going to happen and um and if it is i'm not the one that's going to be able to do it for a variety of reasons um uh, I, I like to think that maybe it is possible but i'm just i'm not the one you know i'm not the one and and not because um i can't have a conversation uh, about it or, or or don't want to have a conversation about it but because for me frankly emotionally and and just looking at the place that i am in my life um it frankly, it hurts too much. And it sucks. It sucks that there are people out there that want to try to deny the existence of others and 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 um, commit a form of erasure that is not only unfair, but it's cruel. Um, and I definitely spent some time being sad, which uh, sucks, quite frankly, because 
um, the episode was so beautiful and the moment which um, stirred up some emotions and others apparently uh, negative emotions rather, uh, which stirred up a lot of positive emotions as well um, was so beautiful and, and, and just wonderful. And um, I, I tried my best to focus on all the positives, which there were many, many, many positives out there. Um, but it was difficult to ignore some of the, you know, the arguments and, and, and some of the, you know, gender critical folk, if you will. So, uh, I just wanted to get that out there. If anyone was curious as to maybe why I hadn't said more, um, I just don't want to, because I loved the episode and I loved that moment. And I thought that Shakina did such an incredible job of portraying this moment with joy and comfort. And, uh, that's what that moment should be for, for everyone. And oftentimes it, not oftentimes, sometimes it's not. And so to see that, that joyous depiction, that educational moment, that reminder that we have always been here, whether, uh, um, you know, you're trans mask or trans femme or, or non-binary or, or, or gay or lesbian, whatever the case might be, um, you know, that, that the history supports that, that people, uh, have, have lived as they are truly meant to be for thousands of years and to try to deny that or negate that in any way, um, feels not only ignorant, but cruel, um, because the information is there and it's easily accessible. Um, and whether you look at, you know, the Egyptians or the Greeks or, uh, um, you know, even, even the Protestant community in, in, in early America or indigenous native American tribes and, um, you know, North American, um, indigenous peoples with, with third genders and et cetera, the history supports that, you know, for thousands of years, there have been people living that. Um, and, and, and it's a shame that, uh, you know, that, that people can't have space in their, in their hearts and minds, um, for that very real and honest fact. So anyway, uh, all that said, uh, I am thrilled to be able to continue talking about the show and continue talking with the people that make this show. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to have some really wonderful off the record conversations recently, um, that again, aren't necessarily always about the show, but just, uh, as a reminder of, of how kind and generous and, and, and truly unique amongst the landscape, I think, of, of creators out there, this, this team is. Um, I, I genuinely believe that there's some special people and, um, and, and what they're creating has been pretty special as well. So uh, this week is no exception. I got to talk to guest star Nadine Ellis, who plays Connie Davis in the episode. She's awesome. Uh, it was so wonderful to, to speak with her and uh, had a great time doing that. And then also got to speak to the one and only Deborah Pratt. Um, you know, Deborah has been on the show a number of times before, which as, even as I say that, I have to kind of uh, really like that's 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 cool. Um, and it was wonderful to have her have her join the show um, from a very special location, actually, uh, which you can hear all about in her interview. Uh, we talk about it right at the top of the interview. Um, but it was very, very cool of her to make time for me to discuss the episode, um, which was a lot of fun. And she had some wonderful things to say, not only about this episode, but about season two in general, some of the character developments, some of the stuff that, you know, she might not have even been completely on board with at first when, you know, when things were kind of being thrown around in the right room, which I thought was fascinating to kind of just see from her perspective, the, you know, kind of the idea that like, oh, I don't know about this, and then kind of seeing the way that it's unfolded and how, um, and how now she's gotten to participate in the telling of that story, and is enthusiastic about it and, and enjoying it as well, which was really, it was really interesting for her to talk about. So I would definitely encourage you to check out both of those interviews. Um, they are available now. Uh, you may have already seen them. You may have watched them first and then come over here. Um, but the, the outsider, again, I felt like it was a really special episode just because it was, it was so good on every level. Um, and we got some incredible payoffs, some wonderful moments of like just release for our characters that we've been following all season. Um, and just such a, a, a a validation of the choice to focus on character development and storytelling through character development and character development through storytelling and 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 not necessarily putting 
so much focus on like this big plot, right? This big meta plot that we have to follow along with, um, which exists. It's there. And, 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 but by, but again, by focusing so much on these characters, now that we're starting to see some of these payoffs, it's incredible because it's like everything is feeding into the larger story. So by focusing on the characters and their interactions and their conflicts, we're now spinning out into this wider narrative, which again has been going on this whole time, but it's starting to connect and fire off in ways that, um, might not be completely unexpected, although in some ways I think they are, but certainly in ways that feel incredibly satisfying because of all of the other uh, uh, storytelling that's come before um, with these characters and and where they are in their in their lives and their existence. So um, so the outsider definitely pays some of that off. Um, let's dive in. Uh, so the the opening scenes, uh, you know, pick up pretty much right where we left off from uh, um, the family treasure with Gideon sitting behind magic's desk uh, with Ian and magic in front of him. And James Frain, I mean, again, he brought so much presence like into the room. Um, at the end of the last episode and seeing that just kind of carry over right away, you know, seeing his face and, 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 and the way that he's playing with the, uh, with the toy on the desk. And, um, again, just that presence was so wonderful. And one of the things, uh, that, that I couldn't help, but take note of is that we, we have this new character in this lived in space for our regulars with two of our regulars, you know, sitting in chairs, they're not necessarily used to sitting in, um, you, you know, maybe Ian less so, but certainly magic not used to being on that side of the table. And how it really changes the dynamic completely. And and not only for the story, but also in, in, a, in a kind of a behind the scenes way too, right? Like the idea that now these actors get to play with someone new, someone who's coming in with clearly all of these bold, big ideas. And this just, you know, he's got that ability to just create, just exist, just behave in, in such an interesting, bold way. And I, I think that it, it really amped up the tension that we felt with our regulars and the dressing down that magic then gives Ian after uh, a Gideon leaves um, is also fantastic. And, you know, Ian, you cannot help but feel for them. Uh, you know, they're clearly having such a hard time uh, processing all of this because there's so much that's been predicated on fear um, and, you know, the fear of never getting Ben back, uh, the fear of being discovered, the, you know, the, the, the fear of being fired now, you know, the fear of not being able to see all of this through the fear of not being able to work on the, the, the DARPA code and, and, and that fear and the way that it comes out in the relationship with magic in particular, I think that Mason, they, they do such an incredible job that you feel I mean, in that moment, I felt for them so deeply because that there's a, 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 a coupled with that fear, there's like this this sadness because of the recognition of the betrayal of this paternal figure, um, you know, of, of this person that means a lot to them. And, and now seeing this anger from magic, justifiable anger, controlled anger in a lot of ways, right, come out at Ian is... It's remarkable. And it's a scene unlike anything that I think we've gotten before on the show between our, our, our HQ team. You know, yes, there have been some times where there might be a little tension here or there, a little suspicion going on or whatever. But for the most part, you know, these are not people who yell at one another, right? These are not people who, who you know, magic is not someone who barks orders at people. Um, and, and so to see this come out and play out in that way was, was interesting. Um, it was emotional. And I, I think, again, that the whole scene, um, whether it's the writing, the direction, um, the acting, you know, whether it's James Frain or Ernie Hudson or Mason Alexander Park, I mean, everyone just showed up you know, clearly. And, and, and it's a very successful scene and it sets the stakes incredibly high for what's to come at HQ. And I think that, um, you know, following up on the events that we saw in the last episode, it's just, it's, it's just wonderfully done. It really, really is. And, um, I, I don't know that all of the questions get answered over the course of this episode. Clearly there's a trajectory and an arc and a, and kind of a payoff, but 
there's stuff that just feels like it's left lingering. Um, you know, and there's definitely this moment I had after, you know, after that scene was over this expectation that, okay, you know, what more are we going to get from Gideon? And the truth of the matter is this is actually his only scene in the episode. And I was left questioning at the end of the episode, is that it? Like is Gideon done and i don't think he is like i don't think there's any way that that you know you get somebody like james frain you create this delicious part for them and 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 then that's it like i don't think that that is the case i do think we'll see him again but but the way that there's there's this sense almost of finality based off of tom's investigation and where magic lands at the end of the episode that you you are almost left wondering well What's, you know, how, how do they work Gideon back in? What is, what else does Gideon want? If he's, you know, he's going to get a head on a platter, he's going to get his pound of flesh. So it's just such an interesting setup. And, and, and the follow through is fascinating too, over the course of the episode. And then you're left asking that question of like, wait a minute, that can't be all what's next. And when you're asking that question by the end of an episode, I mean, I think, again, I think the people have done their job. So it's a wonderful setup. And it's a great first scene. Um, you know, we get uh, the in the leap, um, you know, we get some really wonderful stuff um, right off the bat with uh, Ben kind of trying to figure out, you know, where he is, what's going on, the the phone in the phone booth ringing. I love the way that plays out. I, I, I felt like, you know, I felt very drawn into the story right away with the anonymous, you know, phone call um, and, and, and you know, Ben being told to back off that people are going to, you know, get hurt and, and this sort of thing. Um, and then, of course, we're introduced to Connie as played by Nadine Ellis. Um, look, I just think it's such a magnificent performance it's a magnificent role she's written so well the unique thing about quantum leap and this is not new information we've talked about this before but it's definitely i think warrants um being said again with this episode is that it provides a unique opportunity i think for actors who are coming in just for that one episode to basically be the star of the show for one week you know or certainly the the, the, the co-star if you will and that is absolutely true about the character of connie and 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 an actor like nadine is more than up to the task um and it's just really lovely what she's able to do uh and and you know when we see her early on there's definitely this kind of you know, she's over it, right? She's over everything at this point. Like she's, she's not too sure about this new producer, which is, you know, Ben is uh, leapt into. Um, she's not too sure about, uh, um, her, her job or her, her situation, you know, what's going on at all anymore. Um, you know, I think she, all she's doing is like, maybe I can rebuild my career in a quiet fashion, you know, live out the rest of my days doing this thing that I love, but not having to, uh, risk too much, if you will. Um, we do learn that, uh, Ben has leapt into Brian Conway, who works at the uh, television station in Denver. Um, that Connie is a on-air reporter for, um, you know, Connie's out doing, uh, sort of what, what do they call those stories? The, um, the lifestyle pieces, if you will, you know, interviewing farmer about, uh, the largest pumpkin grown that season or whatnot. Fun fact, apparently Illinois is responsible for the, uh, majority of pumpkins, uh, grown in the country. So I did not know that a children's book taught me that anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, um, not my children's book, by the way, I mean, my child's book, but it wasn't, I wasn't a child when I learned that. I learned that like two years ago. So anyway, um, I, I think that the relationship between the Leapy and, and, and Connie is set up in this nice way because Brian's clearly new. And so it allows, it, it allows Ben a little bit more um, room to be Ben and, and not have to necessarily worry about being too out of character, if you will. Whereas obviously last week we got, you know, this great kind of fish out of water stuff. Whereas as Nadia, like he was having to make excuses all the time, right. You know, finishing school, um, that should be a meme, but anyway, uh, I, I, I just love that setup, but I thought it was very smart and, and it allowed the episode to proceed in some really interesting ways, especially allowing Ben a little bit more agency at times. Um, you know, we get that later on when he and Addison decide to investigate, um, you know, what, what this story was that, that Ben was being tipped off on, if they can find the source and, 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 you know, they can figure out exactly what Brian was working on. And it's really fascinating because it's like the investigation's twofold, right? It's like, what was Brian working on? And now who was he talking to and how do we follow up and finish 
you know, kind of what Brian started in a way. Um, so again, I just think that there's so much about it that was done so smartly uh, in the setup as far as, you know, the storytelling goes. And, and I really appreciated that. Um, you know, we don't learn necessarily a whole lot about Connie's past in this moment or, or why, you know, things have kind of turned out the way they have for her. We, we know that she was, uh, you know, big broadcaster on the broadcast journalist in New York, um, you know, big things on the horizon and then just kind of disappeared and, and ended up in Denver. Um, but we don't necessarily know exactly why. And, uh, we also, you know, don't know why she's not necessarily hungry for more at this point and why she's just you know getting through her day um you know we get the great little nod that she fired her last producer for being drunk on the job um and then Ben in the parking garage uh, meets someone with a gun. Uh, there's a one, you know, the, the very wonderful tense moment there where they, you know, they, they dry fire the gun. And, you know, Ben, of course, is scared out of his wits and then gets hit in the back of the head, knocked out. Um, and after the credits, we come back in the news station and, you know, uh, Connie is kind of being somewhat motherly. Uh, while also, you know, kind of like, you're fine. Um, which is motherly in a different fashion, I suppose. She pulls out a flask, which is interesting because, you know, Ben is just like, Hey, I thought no drinking it. And she has this great moment. She's like, we're off the clock now. Um, but you know, as they, as they start to kind of talk about this a little bit, you can tell that already, like the wheels are turning for Connie. Like she's just sort of like, okay, you know, I, I, and it's wonderful again, because with Nadine's portrayal, you can just see it working, you know, uh, in her eyes, on her face, the, 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 the sort of that pull to get back to what she knows, what she does best to not have to go out and do, you know, these, these puff pieces, basically, um, uh, you, you know, that she can do this real investigative journalism to basically right wrongs, you know, and, and what a wonderful parallel there. Right. Um, and I think that 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 seeing her then kind of kick in immediately, pick up the phone, call the police officer, get, you know, try to get the phone number from the the, the booth, um, the power that she exhibits in that moment and kind of this idea that part of her arc for this episode is that reclamation of her power. Um, it, it's set up really, really well. And, and, and to start to see that journey while also be coupled with the tension of her fear of, of not only failure, but her fear of um, failing like she did before. It, 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 and, and even though we don't necessarily know explicitly what that is, the seeds of it are certainly there and we see it working on her in, in this. And so it just, again, it feels like, you know, the character is very lived in, very honest, very genuine. You you know, everything that we learn about the character over the course of the episode, all of it just rings true. And part of that's the writing, sure. But a lot of it I do you know, genuinely think is, is, is Nadine's uh, beautiful performance. Um, you know, and Deborah directs in such a way that we get we just get some really wonderful moments and, and, and wonderful levels from our actors, you know, both like literally physically they're on, you know, different levels a lot, which is great. But also. Um, you know, just just kind of the 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 uh, the places that they go emotionally and, and mentally. Um, there's there's a lot at play and a lot of different levels. And the episode feels so complete in that way, which is really nice. Um, you know, back at the project, uh, we find out that the person that the DOD has sent in to, you know, basically burn Quantum Leap to the ground is none other than Tom. Um, Addison, of course, thinks that it's, uh, you know, he's there because of her, um, but he's not. Uh, the It's interesting because I, I was a little surprised that Addison asked Tom to go easy on Ian. Not because I don't think that Addison would ask that question. I absolutely do. But it was just interesting in the moment, right? It was, it was, it was like, it was a statement of what's important to Addison. And I think as an Addison episode, if you look at it from the perspective of that character, there's so much that happens over the course of this episode for her. And when you look at like uh, Family Treasure um, or even Off the Cuff, there are some big moments, right, in Off the Cuff for her. But ultimately, she's just on this journey. And even though she's clearly very active, even in those scenes when she's not saying anything, there's not necessarily stuff that's actively happening, happening to her. And she's not necessarily activating the scene, if you will. And in over the course of this episode, she gets the chance to activate the scene a lot and to really 
pay off uh, some some wonderful character beats for Addison through, you know, that we've been building towards since the beginning of the season for her. And Caitlin is 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 wonderful. I mean, she has, in, in my opinion, some of some of her finest work uh, thus far in this episode. Um, and it's just really wonderful to see the way that it's all been building towards some of these moments. And so this interaction with Tom is just really interesting to me um, because because of the subtext, you know, the, the, the two of them, what's happened between them, you know, where they may or may not be headed. Um, you know, the, the, the emotions, the things that they're feeling, um, you know, it's clear that Tom is hurting, right. But he also has a job to do and he's a professional and, and, and he's a former soldier and he's, you know, he's capable of doing this. Right. And, 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 and yet, because they've created this really wonderful character that I feel like, especially at the end of the last episode, you know, when, when Addison broke off the engagement, we saw a sensitive, vulnerable human being that did not devolve into, you know, anger or, or pettiness, um, was clearly hurt, was upset by what had happened. But Again, it was just such a beautiful moment, and I feel like that's followed up really well. And Peter does a wonderful job with that as well. Um, and and the writing just again it works towards these wonderful moments of subtext, and 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 it allows the actors to kind of like play with this dialogue in in, in a way that uh, keeps it from being too direct, too on the nose, too you know. And, and it's just really it's really nice. I like it. Um, of course. You know, I should mention that part of this conversation is spurred on by the fact that we see Ian and they walk right by Addison. And I thought that was a really telling moment, not because they're upset at Addison at all or don't want to talk to Addison, but because clearly what Magic had to say to them early in the episode really landed, really affected them. And they do not want to screw up in any way again. Um and it sucks in a way because I hate to think of Ian as a character that's being ruled by fear in any way, but it's clear that that is definitely the motivating, you know, factor for a lot of what we're seeing over the last, you know, this episode and the last episode, um, the whole season, really, you know, there's been a lot of fear for Ian, which will make the next scene that they have with Tom all the more powerful, in my opinion. Um, at this point, I do want to go back to the fact that, again, I love the agency between Ben and Addison investigating what's happening on you know, being journalists together, getting the reveal that Addison wanted to be a journalist at one time. The lovely romantic moment that plays out between the two of them when he you know, Ben says, you still surprise me. The beautiful, bold, wonderful choice to let that just sit. No dialogue you know, two, two cuts. Like, it's just really wonderful. And we, and the story that's told between these two characters in that moment of silence is, is amazing. You know, this, this kind of awkwardness, this, you know, this, this, all this love. And one of the things I couldn't help but think, you know, I'd love to ask Raymond this question, quite frankly, is that there seemed to be in Ben, this feeling of like, it's okay that I still love Addison. It's okay that I love Hannah. It's okay that we might not be together. It's okay. And 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 it was just really beautiful. And yeah, there was you know towards the very end there was kind of that sort of like all right, this is a little awkward and you know, she's my ex now and you know, she's going to be with this other guy cuz he still doesn't know about everything. And with Addison it's like, it's clear she's uncomfortable, but she's not uncomfortable in the way she was at the beginning of the season. It's a different kind of discomfort. And I think it's part of it is because she's still reckoning with her feelings for Ben. Um, and it's, and it's just lovely. It, 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 it's such a great moment. Um, you know, they're drinking a lot of coffee. She leaves to go get more coffee. That's when we get the scene with Tom. And let's talk about the scene with Ian and, and Tom. I mean, just great work from Mason, just such lovely work. You know, we got such a powerful moment last week when they were, you know, seeing Ben um, kind of give the, the, the accomplished ship to um, Dean's coming out. And, and, and it was just wonderful, tender moment. And now it's, it's, it's fascinating because in an episode that feels a lot like a, the, the reclamation of power in a way um, we see, Ian kind of reclaim their power in this really interesting way and not apologize for anything. 
and 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 have this moment where they seem to all the fear that I've been talking about, they seem to just kick it to the curb because they are now, you know, I, I did what was right. I know it was right. I'm not sorry for it. And, and, and furthermore, when everyone else gave up, I didn't, and I did the right thing and I am going to, and I'm going to continue to do that. And I'm the only one, I'm the only one that can, that can see this through. And they're wonderful here, you know. I mean, Mason's fantastic, and the scene just plays so well. And 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 I love, you know, Tom does kind of try to take it a little easy uh, on Ian in a way, even even kind of warning them, right? Like warning them to like, you know, don't 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 say that. You, you know, are you sure this is the route you want to go down? Um, but the defiance shown by Ian again, I just feels like they're kind of reclaiming their, their power in a way and, and, and their confidence and, and, and their self justification, um, for everything that they've done. And it's a really great, it's a really great moment. And, and again, to continue to just sing this episode's praises, it, it's a reminder of how rich this episode is for all of our characters, because I feel like everyone gets some really wonderful stuff. Um, Oh, then we got what is, uh, I, I might be jumping around a little bit. I, I apologize if I am, but uh, we get just this beautiful, beautiful scene between Ben and Addison. Um, actually, no, excuse me. Uh, 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 I don't want to skip that far ahead. Anyway, we also have the, you know, on the investigative side of stuff, um, you know, we see Connie just really inspired by all of this really kind of like, I'm going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this right. And we're going to do this because I'm good at it. And all of the things, you know, all of these um, assets that I have to bring to the table, everything that I know to do is going to, is going to help get us there. And, 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 you know, come along with me, Ben or, or Brian, you know, we're going to, we're going to get this done and we get some amazing scenes, you know, this, this wonderful moment between the farmer and his wife and uh, uh, Connie encouraging, you know, the wife to, to get checked out and the way that she does it, so so beautiful um you know they're on now to to um to herbicore because they're they 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 know that the uh the root out is um can can cause cancer and and someone on the inside is you know is giving ben uh brian this information and you know they're they're attacking it and it's really wonderful and we see you know again th this this agency from all of our characters no one's sitting back and waiting for the story to come to them and and i love that I, i've always loved that you know you listen to any of the classic reviews and one of the things that i say a lot is i don't like it when the episode happens to sam i like it when sam happens to the episode um and this is one of those episodes where it it feels like and this is and again you know what i didn't even think about this until right now this is one of the episodes that capitalizes so well on the format of the revival because everyone happens to this episode. Nobody just sits back. And that is probably one of the highest compliments I can give the episode from my own personal perspective, because getting to see everyone actively engaged, making choices and having the agency to affect the events of the episode. That's what I'm here for. You know, I, I, I when, 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 when it feels like we get, you know, characters just kind of sitting back and waiting for the episode to come to them. I, I that's just not engaging uh, to me in the same way. So anyway, seeing the, the, the investigation and the follow through on all of this. And then of course we get to Robbie, the, the brother of, uh, of Chet, who, uh, uh, you know, is kind of the, the CEO and the guy in charge and, you know, the charismatic one, uh, Charlie Bowden is great. I mean, what a wonderful performance. Again, you know, such a strong guest cast. There's great material to work with, too. Uh, I just I love the character of Robbie. I love, again, fear. Right. Um, and yet part of that fear is uh, almost assuaged by his desire to. I don't you know, I wonder sometimes how much of it is early on, especially with the way he plays the character. There's that question mark, which I love. Is he doing this because it's the right thing to do or is he doing this because he wants to, you know, get at his brother in some way? Um, and, and, it, and, and it could be both. And I think it is, honestly. Um, and, and I love that that first scene between them, you know, and, and, and the fear of Robbie and, and, and the, the resignation. Right. And, and what he says about people disappearing and, um, you know, justifying, again, his fears and his position on all of this. And it's just really well done. Um, when we find out that there's been a car blown up and they're going to go cover it and they realize that it's Robbie's car. And that's when we just see this shift and, and, and 
Nadine does it so well. And, 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 and so does Raymond. I mean, when Raymond recognizes the car and kind of starts to put down the camera and just the way that scene plays out is, is so lovely. And then the way that it's followed up on and we see the videotape being played in the room, it's just really, really powerful. Um, there's something about it that feels so honest and so raw, and I really loved it. And then, of course, you know what Nadine does in in, in the, those next moments, just letting it go, and 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 putting it all out there. Um, you know, letting Ben know why that she was oh she got overzealous, she pushed too hard, and one of her sources took his own life, and the impact that that had on her. And one of the things that I was so struck by is like, here's this, this human being talking about some of these things that make her good at what she does, right? Being overzealous, you know, knowing, knowing how to push, like going after it. And she's using that to subvert her own power, her own strength, her own ability to tell stories that need to be told. And it was so devastatingly sad uh, on that level alone, like on the surface level of just seeing this character have this breakdown because of the trauma of the moment and, and having to relive that trauma because of this new trauma that's now arisen. That enough is is sad. But but to then think about it in terms of like she is literally, you know, she's her own kryptonite in that moment. And it's just like it's so identifiable. It's so relatable because I feel like we all have that capacity and we all have likely done it. You know, I know I have. And so seeing her kind of be her own kryptonite in that moment makes, to me, it makes that moment even, you know, sadder. Uh, and, 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 and I love the way that Ben kind of receives that information as well. Uh, it's just a wonderful moment. And, and again, Nadine is so powerful and so honest and so raw. And I really thought, I, I just really thought it was well done. Um, you know, speaking of trauma real quick, I just on, it was the other thing that was kind of relatable. And it's something that I've been thinking a lot about recently. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine about this recently is that sometimes we often forget that the act of recalling trauma is traumatic in and of itself. And that the way that trauma can just kind of, you know, compound itself, grow exponentially out of you know, out of a moment and, 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 and the way that it can cause us to, to spiral. Um, it's, it feels, um, insurmountable, but I think that one of the things I love about this episode is that th there's this reminder that it's not, and not only is it not, but that, you know, with empathy and sensitivity uh, and grace, having that support system in some way, um, that it's a better, you know, it's, it's more of a clarion call, in my opinion, to um, respond the, to a positive way to respond to that trauma and that trauma response than that sort of like pull yourself up by your bootstraps sort of, you know, bullshit. So anyway, it was something that was on my mind and I felt like it was very connectable, very re relatable in this episode. We get one of my favorite scenes of the whole season between Addison and Ben, um, you know, sitting on the floor of the records room and Ben is drinking. Um, and I think that that's the other thing is it's like throughout the course of this episode, there are these sometimes subtle, sometimes not so subtle early, early in the episode, not so subtle. I'm talking about Ben being distracted, but throughout the course of the episode, we get some more subtle moments too. Um, uh, these reminders of the place that Ben is in. And I didn't mention this on purpose earlier because I didn't want to steal focus from the story of this episode, but this moment now, I think it, it, it's worth talking about. We get the information pretty early on that Ben's letter made it to Hannah and or Josh and that he did get the surgery and it saved his life, but that he still died in a car accident. And you see the way that that works on Ben throughout the course of this episode, because he feels this a similar failure, I think, to, to what Connie does. And in this scene, to see him kind of at that low, in that low state, and to see Addison come in, and to see Ben have space for Addison, really, and to see Addison allow herself to be vulnerable and honest with Ben in a way that she really hasn't been able to this season. 
at least not in such a sensitive way. We've seen her be honest with Ben and maybe a little vulnerable, but it's some, I mean, in the early part of the season, it came out in moments of, of anger and frustration and hurt. So to see a moment where she's past that genuinely, it's just, <coughs> it's just so lovely. I, I'm, I'm, I'm touched by the performance that Caitlin gives here. Um, I think the writing is so sensitive. Um, and the way that the way that Raymond acts between the lines in this moment is really lovely. And his response to Addison saying, I got engaged. Oh, and then I, you know, got disengaged. Oh, there are so many ways, right. That, the, that those two O's could have been played. And it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. It's just such a beautiful moment. And, 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 and I love the close-ups of Caitlin's face here. Um, the, the sensitivity, the directness, the, the just getting in touch with that place of pure honesty and kind of disentangling it from other emotions. She's not angry. She's not sad. She's not, she's just so honest. She's speaking her truth in a way. There's a theme here. She's reclaiming her power, um, over herself. And it's just such a strong moment. It's such a strong moment for the character. It's a strong moment for the actor and it's a strong moment for the series. And, and, and it really, it stood out. It's it stood out, and it felt important. And it was again storytelling through character development, through character growth, and uh, it's something that the season has, you know, just succeeded at so much throughout the course of the uh, of the you know past uh, ten episodes. And 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 now here we are, you know, in the eleventh episode with two more to go, and we're seeing some of these big payoffs now with this character development. It's really lovely, and, and it's a testament to the writing, and it's a testament to you know the cast, and 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 just that overall story that they've been telling this whole time. Uh, of course, they also have the revelation in this moment, Ben does, that uh, that Robbie could still be alive, that he, you know, he faked his death in order to disappear so that he would have no connection to what was going down. Um, and he then we get another just incredibly lovely, beautiful, sensitive, amazing scene. It's so well written and so well acted with Connie in the news van and, and Ben coming to her and the sensitivity that Ray has and just the. The compassion, the empathy, you know, this, 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 this sort of that movement, uh, that inspiring, you know, quality, that supportive quality of Ben coming out in, in, in this really empathetic moment. I mean, saying the words, I can only imagine how this made you feel. It's, it's, it's just really beautiful. And, and again, it's not a, you know, it's not a, we got work to do partner. It's, it's, it's just, it's wonderful. And it's so motivating and it clearly touches Connie. And, you know, Nadine talked about this in the interview uh, about how she didn't have to work that day because Ray did it, you know, and she, all she had to do was just respond and it's beautiful. It's a wonderful moment, you know? And, and, and again, it's one of those moments where you see these three actors, right? Cause Addison's there too. And you see these three actors and especially again, with the unique convention of the show, of course, that Addison is not being seen by, by, by Connie, but you see the way that this scene is working on all three of them. And it's just, it's just really wonderful. Uh, and then they, they get to business um, and they've got, they've got work to do and they find Robbie. And again, like Charlie is, wonderful like i i just love this so much first of all the, the the sense of humor the episode has is 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 i i i feel like i've not spoken enough about it because there are some really funny moments but one of my one of my favorite moments of humor of the whole episode is when connie and better stand outside the hotel door robbie sees them and is like oh darn you know it's it's just this really wonderful moment uh of humor and levity and then the conversation that they have afterwards 
again, it's it, it mirrors kind of what Ben did for Connie. Now Connie is doing that for Robbie in this really kind of sensitive way um, and reminding him about what's right and, 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 and doing what's right. And now we get to see again a character kind of coming into their power in this lovely way because – it, now it's not about sticking it to his brother, right? Now it's not about like, you know, the the, the sort of spurned younger sibling or anything like that. It, it, it's about, yeah, I need to do what's right here and I'm going to do it. And so he facilitates them kind of getting the opportunity, if you will. Um, we get, uh, you know, this this scene between Addison and Tom that definitely feels, there's a sense of finality to it. And, um, and it's lovely. And again, there's that sensitivity, the empathy, the compassion that these two characters have for one another. Um, and also Tom, you know, kind of saying like, I had to do my job. I had to do my job, you know, and yeah, Ian might lose their job because of it. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I did what I could do and, 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 and now, you know, they have this, this, this moment where again, it just feels like this is the end of the road in, in a lot of ways. And, and I, you know, and, and they have that hug and then, you know, and Tom, Tom tells her, you know, bring Ben home. And, and it's, and it's, it's really lovely. And uh, Tom has that wonderful line about fate um, and, you know, how they were fated to be together and they were fated to break up. And there's been some really amazing things at play throughout the course of the season. And, uh, you know, themes of sacrifice, themes of fate, um, y- you know, the, the, the idea that certain things should not be changed. Um, and, and, and I think again, that it's all getting ready to culminate in something pretty big and awful and amazing and wonderful and heartbreaking and hopefully uplifting at the same time. Um, but I, I think that there are certain things that characters have said over the course of the season and this fate thing being one of them that, um, yeah, that, that is definitely going to be at play in these last couple of episodes. Um, and also just, just the themes of mortality and grief and mourning and, and just death, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hanging heavy over, over these episodes, especially, um, and not just, uh, you know, Josh's, um, demise that we're told about at the end of off the cuff. And then, you know, everything that Ben is trying to do to prevent that only to find out that he still dies. And, you know, and, and, and now there are other people dying and, 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 and other people at risk and, um, yeah, it's just there's there's just a lot again. There's just a lot at play here. Um, I you know I was again I I'm on the record on the podcast. I was not sold on Tom or Peter um, really until episode six, and and since then there's just been you know some some really really wonderful work that he's done. And and this episode and the last episode especially, you know, I feel like we've gotten to see. Um, I think maybe we we saw more depth and levels in secret history just due to the nature of him being the the hologram but overall where the character has landed and what we've seen if this is the last we see of Tom in this episode or this is it for him um I'm 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 grateful for it you know I'm grateful for the opportunity to have gotten to know this new character and I I I just I I know there are people out there that m- might not like his inclusion for a variety of reasons. Um, but I think it was a great idea. I really do. And, and, and I think that the opportunities that it's provided for, um, you know, the tension with, with, with Addison and Ben and everything, I just think it's been, it's, it's, it's been a great decision and uh, I've grown to really appreciate the character and the dynamic that he brought to HQ and just to the, to the series as a whole. Um, you know, we kind of move in towards our, our climax here for the leap where they're at Herbicore and Connie's interviewing Chet now. And we see Matthew Polkamp, who, again, yet another wonderful guest star in the course of this episode, um, doing some great work here as, as kind of our, our big bad of the episode, if you will. And yet so frighteningly relatable and real, not a mustache twirling villain at all. Just somebody who's charismatic, has a way with words. And is willing to do whatever's going to make, you know, his his accountant happy um, and uh, uh, his bank account look good. Uh, and 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 it's 
it's weird because as I'm talking about it, it makes the character even more chilling in some ways. But 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 also not again, not in, in any way that this is some sort of megalomaniacal character. Um, so it, it 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 was just a really good scene. I love the interview scene. Um, you know, Ben retrieves the paper that proves that they have been uh, aware of the fact that this uh, root out could cause cancer and that, you know, they're willing to just take that chance. Um, and, and then the guard stops Ben. Uh, we get this lovely scene with Jen. And again, because I feel like all bets are off and, and, and I'm wondering where things are headed. Jen, you know, kind of, there's this moment where Addison's like, what will we do without you? And, 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 and you just get this feeling of just sort of like, Oh God, you know, like, uh, are, are Jen's days numbered in some way? Um, which kind of gets followed up on in this episode. Um, you know, Ben gets out of this, uh, this moment with some, some craftiness and assists from, from Addison and Ziggy, which is nice. Um, you know, telling the guy that uh, his, his poor mother and her backgammon club will see his face all over the news if anything happens to him. And then Ben just knocks the guy out. Like, it's not enough to kind of like scare this guy into submission, but then he's just like, he hits him over the head with his trophy. <laughs> and I almost felt a little bad for the guard. I was like, damn, Ben, that's cold. Um, but it was also, it also made sense. And it was a really wonderful, like it, it, it tied back into the beginning of the episode when, you know, that guy hit Ben and and had no qualms about busting Ben's head open. So, um, so yeah, just a, it, again, it was it was it was a great great little moment. Uh, and then we get, I mean, it's moments like this that that just have always appealed to me on Quantum Leap, and it's the reason why I, I think that this episode as a whole, you look at the leap side of things, it feels very old school in so many ways, um, because it reminds me so much of the times that Sam would like interact with some of these characters and inspire them in some way. And then just kind of, they would get the agency, right. To be able to right their own wrong in a way. And that's what we see here. And it's lovely. You know, Connie cuts the interview short basically because Ben's got the file. Um, um, you know, we, we, we get this moment where they're, they're starting to pack up Davison. The editor is like starting to pack up John Marshall Jones. I should add who, by the way, uh, played fluke in China beach, which is any longtime listener of the show knows one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Um, he, he's, he's in uh, a few episodes uh, of China beach in the first couple of seasons actually um as well as many 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 other things very funny guy very you know talented guy um and and has a wonderful presence throughout the course of this episode as well and 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 i think his talent um almost belies his, his amount of screen time and 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 his lines because he's someone that again i think you know is, is suitable for for any type of role really um but anyway they're starting to pack up and as addison's doing the wrap-up for ben which is great another kind of old school moment right uh he asks about Connie and, and Addison's just like, you know, why don't you see for yourself? Ben comes around the corner and yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, we, she does, she reclaims her power and, and she does it in this way that just, again, it feels so genuine and it feels so honest and it feels like this is my job. I'm doing my job. And, and, and she doesn't make a meal out of it. Right. You know, there's nothing like, it doesn't feel like this is her moment. You know, it's, it's, it's very much just sort of like I'm doing my job and, and it was all the more powerful for that, you know, um, which I, which again, I really appreciated. Uh, Ben has this awesome line, you know, it's all, I'm, you know, it's, it's always me. Um, it, it, yeah, I did just the, just sort of the meta, you know, aspect of that and, and, and the way that, you know, he's been this crusader for good now for, you know, for the past, uh, 29 episodes. Um, it's really just, yeah, it's, it, it, again, it's a, it's a really wonderful moment. And Nadine knocks it out of the park. Um, it's just special. It's just a special performance and it's a special episode. And, and I really love seeing that. Um, it's yeah, incredibly, incredibly well done. Um, Ben leaps <clears throat> and then we get a scene between magic and Jen and Nenrissa is, is great in this scene. And, and I feel like, um, I feel like I could levy a genuine criticism at the season overall for not having enough for Jen to do. And by way of that Nenrissa to do. Um, but this moment again, in an episode that seems to have moments for everyone now gives Jen her due as well. And magic too. I mean, magic's had some stuff already in the episode, but this is certainly a great moment for magic. 
and that's one of the things, and I, I, you know, I don't know if it's Deborah's direction. I don't know if it's where they are in the season. I don't know if it's just the nature of the script. I don't know exactly what it is, but there is a vibe to this episode where everyone just seemed to get in touch with, with their honesty. You know, everyone just was completely like, this isn't exposition. This isn't, it was so character driven and it was just, it was, it was, it was really, really well done. And, uh, and, and even, you know, with, with Ernie, I mean, Ernie's always great. Don't get me wrong, but like, even in this scene for Ernie, it's just the truthfulness of magic in this scene. It's so raw and so believable. And, um, and, and, and it's the same thing from Jen, you know, I mean, there's this like so much at work in Jen in this moment, right? Like fear, anger, sadness, and it just, and the way that it kind of like comes out and this idea of like, it's almost like saying like, you can't quit dad, you know? And, 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 and it's just a really lovely moment because you start to think like, is magic going to, fire Jen because he feels like he can't fire Ian because they're the ones going to get Ben home or, you know, or, or no, is it going to be magic? And I'll admit that for me and for many of you watching and listening, you might've felt the same way for me. Uh, I, I started to kind of feel early on that magic was going to maybe have to sacrifice himself to get out of this. Uh, but I wasn't sure. And I definitely wasn't sure when Jen came into the office, especially after having that line about like, what would you do without me? And it's like, Oh shit, are we about to find out? So the scene was, was, was just wonderful. And, and the resignation for magic, um, coupled with, again, this just great sense of agency and this great sense of, of surety, this great sense of this is my power. This is what I can do. Um, and, and I feel like Jen is kind of left like, you know, what are we going to do without you? You know, how do we, how do we even make this work? And the emotion at play, uh, um, you know, for Jen and, 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 and where Nanrissa goes with it all is, I don't know. It's just really, it was just, again, very raw, very honest, very like, Oh man, you know? And it's like, you almost have to ask that question. It's like, at this point, do they know, had they read the finale? And I don't think they had, maybe they had, no, I don't think that they had, maybe they had. Anyway, um, it, it, it's just it, it's just a really, really wonderful moment. And uh, it, it ends the episode in this in this cloud of uncertainty um, in this emotionally raw scene. Um, so I've gone on enough. Fact of the matter is, I love this episode. I think it's fantastic. I think it's one of the best episodes of the revival. Um, I easily think it's the best non Hannah episode that we've had all season long. Um, even even with the addition of Hannah, I think it ranks up there with with Nomad and and Secret History, as far as I'm concerned. Um, genuinely, I, I, I just think it's it's such a wonderfully strong episode in so many ways. Um, and 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 if it is a if it is in any way important of things to come, um, you know we are in for 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 one hell of a treat and one hell of a ride over the course of of I almost said the next two weeks, but it's just one week because it's two episodes in one night. Don't you dare miss it! February twentieth, beginning at nine p.m. eight central, we get two episodes in a row to close out season two of Quantum Leap. Uh, as a fan of the show, as someone who covers the show, talks about the show, gets to talk to the people involved with the show, you know, tries to engage with the community as much as I possibly can. I, it's just been uh, a thrill. It's just been such a thrill. And and it's been a moving season. Um, it, it, it's been incredible to see the growth of these characters, these actors, of, of the writers. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm... Uh, you know, just again, as a fan of the show, I don't know what to expect from these next two episodes at all. And I love that. And I have theories and I have thoughts and I, you know, there's lots of big stuff that's going on in my head. It's like, you know, does Hannah die in the next episode? Um, who is Gideon? You know, I, I mentioned before that I had thoughts about Gideon's identity and like, you know, the, will we see Gideon again? Is Gideon done? I don't know. Um, uh, you know, will I, I here's the things that I that I think are going to happen. I think that Hannah will see Ben for Ben at some point. I don't know exactly how I don't know, you know what that's going to mean. But I do think that that's something that's going to happen. Um, I do think that 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 Ben is going to have to do Ben is going to have to operate that engine of sacrifice for Project Quantum Leap in some way. Uh, I you know, I don't think that means he sacrifices himself. I don't think I, you know, I, again, I do think that all bets are off. I, I, I don't know that everyone makes it out alive, but I, I, I just, 
I feel it, it, there's a genuine threat to our characters and, and, and it, it, you know, that, that sort of existential threat um, um, colors all of my thoughts about the, sh about the show and where it could go. Um, I, I, I think that, uh, I think that there's some stuff coming and what very, very, very little I do know uh, if it turns out to be true, there's some, there's some stuff that is just going to blow people away and engage us on a level that I don't know that the show has done yet. And, and, and isn't that the point, right? Like anytime you watch a television show, especially when you get to the season finale, um, you know, you want those last few episodes to just be the peak, right. And, and, and just pay off everything that's come before and, and open the door to, to new stuff. And they did that last season, right. They did that with judgment day. They certainly did that with what took so long in the, in, in, you know, uh, at the, um, beginning of this season, you know, just blowing the doors open for new ways of storytelling. And so you just have to wonder, it's like, how are they going to do that again? Um, Cause I think that is what's going to happen. Um, so there's lots of questions. I love seeing all the theories out there. I try not to say too much because I know some people think that I know more than I do. And in some cases I do know more than, than, than they might think I do, but in some cases I don't. And so I try not to say too much cause I don't want anyone to think that I'm giving spoilers or subtle hints or, you know, anything like that. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I've got my theories and, and I love, seen all the other theories so let me know what you think um you know hit hit that like and subscribe button uh i just appreciate you all so much for being here it means a lot to me um uh, you know I, I i want the the show to to continue on fate's wide wheel to continue on to continue covering quantum leap and and, and other stuff um you know jj and i certainly have some things that we want to get to my schedule has been crazy lately um i i just got cast in a new show um that begins rehearsals tomorrow the other show hasn't even finished yet um you know there's 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 parenting i i started this part-time job at this really lovely uh game store which has such an incredible inclusive community that that i just love and 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 being able to be there and and be surrounded by you know all these like tabletop and card games that i grew up with and love so much has been a lot of fun but obviously you know it takes up time too and so that's all to say that time is definitely at a premium for me. I'm doing the best I can to do as much as I can for this show. Um, and, and, and I've got some really, really exciting stuff lined up for next week. Um, if I can pull it all off, if I can get it all out there in time, you're going to have your hands full after the episodes air. Um, there will be a lot of content and I'm not going to release it all at once. Um, I think, you know, I might just do my, my solo reviews uh, of each episode and then release, um, you know, maybe one interview for, for 2.12 and then one interview for 2.13 and then just have stuff to, to release uh, afterwards. Um, not on a weekly basis. I'll get it out quicker than that, but definitely, um, you know, getting it out so that folks can be... Uh, uh, you know, engaged on many different levels and having different, you know, people to hear from when it comes to uh, the show that we love so much. Um, speaking of love and appreciation and gratitude, I have to thank everyone who supports this show financially through Patreon. Um, I'm, I'm genuinely humbled by it and I really appreciate it. And it means that I get to do this um, and not have to, you know, pay any money out of pocket in order to produce the show. And that genuinely means the world to me. And it makes doing this possible um, because without it, there are definitely times over the past six months when it m might not have been you know, feasible for me to continue doing it um, from just from a financial aspect. So the fact that you're able to do that for me means the world. And I, I genuinely appreciate it. And, um, you know, with, with everything out there in the world, I, I want us all as a community to try to right some wrongs and get out there and do some things, um, you know, for uh, uh, this, this community and, 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 and uh, not only our community, but the community that you live in and, and assist with food drives or coat drives or glove drives this time of year. Um, you know, and, and obviously the Trevor project means so much to me. And, um, I, 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 you know, hope if you're supporting a charity, um, for the world at large, the Trevor project is, is one that you'll consider doctors without borders is another, um, and of course, epilepsy foundation UK, um, is one that I know is near and dear to our friend Matt Dale's heart. And, uh, if you could support that, you can do it in Matt's name. That would be lovely. Um, I'm gonna talk about Matt more here in just a moment. Um, 
And, 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 uh, of course, you know, if after all that you do want to support the show, you can head over to patreon.com slash fates wide wheel. Um, whether, you know, it's a dollar or 10, you'll get access to everything, um, on that site, including all of the behind the scenes videos with JJ Lindell about the creation of his posters for quantum leap. You will also get early access to, uh, the interviews that I will be releasing, uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks in conjunction with the finale. Um, there's going to be a lot of content, hopefully and you will get access to it at least 24 hours, if not 48 hours before it releases um, to, you know, to YouTube um, and everyone else. So that's another perk that you'll get, and you could get that right now. So uh, head over to Patreon, join up, uh, check out the perks. There will be more coming for sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to, to share that with you all as well. <sighs> um. I had to save this for the end um, because uh, I didn't know if I was going to be able to, you know, make it back <laughs> in order to do the rest of the episode. Um, I miss Matt a lot. And um, some of the conversations that I've been having with people who make this show um, you know, have, have, uh, we've spoken a lot about how enthusiastic Matt would be about this and about how in many ways the creation of these last, you know, four or five episodes, especially, um, were genuinely done with people like Matt in mind and, 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 and in such a way that like fans like Matt are going to, you know, love this hopefully, or at least have a lot to say about it. And, um, you know, Deborah and I talked about him a little bit. Um, and, uh, the fact that this episode carries the dedication to Matt to our friend, Matt Dale, um, is just lovely, awful, but lovely. And, um, I like to think that he would have appreciated and loved that a great deal that Deborah Pratt directed an episode of quantum leap that is dedicated to his memory. Um, And in a, in a season that has touched a lot on loss and grief and mourning and the suddenness and inexplicable nature of that, um, it has connected me to a sense of understanding and comfort um, that we are not alone in those feelings. And that anyone who's experienced loss on, on that level uh, or any level, really, um, you know, we are all connected. We're all connected by way of that. And if you're watching this show, if you're watching Quantum Leap, if you're reading Matt's books, not only are we connected in our collective mourning of Matt's loss, but we are also serving to keep Matt's memory alive. And I hope that there are people out there that don't listen to podcasts, <laughs> that don't watch these YouTube videos, that haven't read those books, that see that name at the end of those credits, or the end of the show, rather. It's the first thing you see after the show is over. That search that out that want to know who was Matt Dale, because if you want to know, there are people that will tell you, and I am one of them. As much as I knew him, I will tell you. <laughs> um, there are people that knew him far better than I did, and, and I'm sure they will tell you. And if you're stumbling upon this in any way, because you saw that dedication and wanted to know who's Matt Dale, Matt Dale was a lovely human being with an incredible passion for Quantum Leap. 
the new show and the old. And he has written volumes uh, on the show. And you can see one of them over my shoulder right now. The other one is literally right beside me um, because I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> and uh, you can get those books. You can buy these books and you can find out everything you've ever wanted to know about Quantum Leap because it's that big. <laughs> um, and you can go back and you can... You can listen to or watch the Quantum Leap podcast and you'll see Matt and you'll learn about Matt and you'll see Matt talk to people that make this thing that he loved so much and you'll get to see Matt and I talking, talking about his books, talking about interviewing people together. You know, that was such a thrill and I thought that there would be more times. So I'm incredibly moved and incredibly touched and very grateful that it was something that could happen. And, uh, and I, and I, I say this knowing that there are people, um, you know, like his friend Kevin, um, or his partner, Sharon, that are also incredibly moved and touched by it as well. So, if you've made it this far and you're still listening, just know that uh, Matt Dale was fucking awesome. And I love and miss him dearly. And I will never uh, watch or talk about this show without thinking about him. And in a way that is a great gift. And, uh, I will do what I can to keep him alive in my, in my heart and hopefully in all of yours. <laughs> um, with that said, I've been doing something recently that I hadn't really talked about yet. And I feel like now's a perfect time, but you're going to see a wonderful piece of art uh, at the end of every episode of Fate's Wide Wheel that JJ Lindell so kindly created. And with Sharon's permission, Matt's partner, Sharon's permission, um, I will have closed the, every single episode of Fate's Wide Wheel from here on out. Um, and just send the show over to Matt. <laughs> um, so that's what you've been seeing these past few weeks. And, uh, and you're going to see that until Fate's Wide Wheel is, is no more. So, um, thank you, Matt. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of this community and uh, I appreciate all of you so very much. And I appreciate the folks that took the time to reach out to me um, this past week because I did post something um, about just feeling a little sad uh, about some of what was going on. And, and I just appreciate all of you for doing that, taking the time to reassure and encourage me. Um, thank you for, for, for being a friend going down the road and back again. Uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of one another. Stay safe out there. And remember always, always, always leap responsibly. <laughs>